because you have everything you're at the destination which a lot of people strive for especially big city lads like you're from london investment bank and it's it's nearly like landing the premier yeah. league job you are at the destination everyone is looking to get to and i'm sure internally you had ambitions within that but externally people are like okay he's made it what's the thought process or in the conversations like even at home when you're thinking okay i'm gonna ditch all this to move to a career which has practically zero upsides financially uh, or a very limited potential of making cash from it financially so i think the, the first point to make here is that um the investment banking thing uh is sort of chinese whispers uh that's one industry um and i was actually in broking right which is uh, a financial service but you're it's it's a slightly different industry um needless to say uh, and, and before that I was working for a company called Tradition uh, in foreign exchange brokerage. But then I went off to do ship broking in oil, uh, moving all around the world, uh, which my family was involved in. Uh, my father was a trader in that industry. So I came into that industry. I worked very hard in that industry, but uh, I came in with uh, you know contacts and stuff like this. and. My father was in a position of influence where he could uh, send business in that direction uh, to the broker who then puts on the trade, right? Or finds the the boat to ship around the world. So, you know, yeah, but what, in anything you do, you have to, like, if you're not committed to it or if you don't learn the business, you will never be good. Like, you have to know where every ship is in the Mediterranean or the Black Sea, like, what time it's going to be there like the the owner of the ship is saying it's going to be there on this day mm, well that's bull because i know there are delays uh at that port and that's going to reduce the time ah but then it's got to sail over there ah it's got to get bunkers as well uh they've got to fill the ship up that's going to take an extra 24 hours uh there's waiting time at newport like you have to know the detail it's like the bike you have to know like the hub bearings uh the the q factor on the pedals uh, it's a details business. And if, if you don't know all those details, like you will get called out by the trader putting on the trade because he's he's got a premium that he needs to pay because he can't pick up the oil at the terminal. Like you're going to get called out and you just won't be used again. Like it's not good enough. Um, so, yeah, I, I think from that, and I, and I had some really good clients. Uh, I and, and with new, when you have the information, uh, that you get from doing the business, you can uh, dictate where that information goes. So you can use that to your advantage and manipulate a situation to gain new clients because they want that information. And then you do the bu business with them on the basis that you're not going to, you're going to keep their information quiet, etc. So if you manage that, and I had some really good relationships going um, when I was in Italy, uh, working for a company called Sanavama, which is a, uh, a fantastic company they do phenomenal well phenomenally well and they're a very niche product um so do you think your attention to detail came from that industry uh, i've just always been like that if if i do something i want to sit there and read about it and and iron everything out that i need to know about it um because i i think i've also been brought up in a family where like if you don't concentrate the shit is gonna like someone's going to pull the shit over your eyes and you better watch your back because no one's going to give you anything and everyone's out there to eat you. Like that is genuinely how I've been brought up from 15 to 16. Like there's no freebies. But isn't, isn't there like a, isn't there like a, there's a line or there's a trade off to know where to move from theory to practice. And there's a good friend of mine and he springs to mind when you're talking about this and this idea of, you know, really immersing yourself in the theory before you dive into it. We were in university together and we had the summer off and, you know, I'm sure like you did, you take up a summer project and you say, okay, this summer I'm going to do X. So this yeah. summer he decided to learn about the guitar, sorry, learn to play the guitar, but he's very detail orientated like you. So he bought every textbook he could on the guitar and he immersed himself in the history of the guitar, yeah. the fabrics of the guitar, the strings of the guitar. We went back yeah. to college and he could not play a single note on the guitar, <laughs> but he knew everything about the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. No, too right. Um, yeah, I, I think 
also people I speak to, new people I meet, they could be involved in anything, but I'm always interested to hear, like if they've got something to add about something really small, it could be this piece of paper or how it's made or the fabric on it. Like I find that interesting. Um, and I can, I can sit there and listen to them for 30, 40 minutes. Uh, if, if they're really passionate in the way they deliver what they're talking about to me kind of thing. So when you made the switch from your career to a cyclist, I think the, the miss is, and I, I don't know the actual answer to this, so I'm curious as well. The myth is, oh, it's this guy and he's working, you know, in a bank and brokerage and he's decided to go all in and give everything to cycling. But I'm assuming you had seen some level of traction in cycling at that point. I'm assuming you'd gone up through the cats and you were starting to win some bike races and this wasn't, you know, somebody who just bought a bike in this sort of crazy venture. So I, I bought the bike, um, trained for two or three months and my mate went to a race and he was like, mate, you've got you got to fucking do this. This is just fucking lively. Like, <laughs> um, I was like, oh, I'll do a bit more training. Come on. And he's like, nah, just like, check yourself in at the deep end. And I was like, go on then. Uh, so I went there and uh, I, I think I came second in my cat four race and like just felt alive, um, like alive. Uh, and I, have, I haven't felt a natural high like that um, for as long as I can remember. Uh, you know, you can feel artificial highs, but that's something slightly different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a different podcast. <laughs> uh, together, yeah. But, um, you know, so yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's a very healthy thing to do and, and a good way to uh, divert the energy. But yeah, fr from then, basically. And that was at 25. But I had a, a thing where uh, I bet some guys in the office they're like, nah, mate, you're, you know, you fat bugger. Like, you can't run a marathon. I was like, what are you lot on about? Um, I, give me six weeks and I'll run that thing in three hours. You know, being Billy Big Bollocks. Um, anyway, I managed to, like, uh, sponsor a charity, uh, which fortunately was to a good cause, a cause. And I got myself a place in the London Marathon. And I have never suffered so much to that day. That and the RAS. Uh, the two times in my life where I've thought, like, <laughs> I'm properly questioning my well-being. Um, <laughs> anyway, I ran the, mar the London Marathon at, I don't know, 83 kilos, like, not in great shape, at, and 259, 58, to give you an idea of, like, how much I suffered to stay with that pacer. I, I was Ooh, dropped, came back. That's a pacing strategy. Like, collapsed at the end. But then I thought, like, this is fun. Um so that was a few months before. So I knew I sort of had that ability to suffer uh, and to hang on. But yeah, then when I started this cycle racing, it was something else. But then the nice thing about cycling is you can, you can really suffer, but then it doesn't matter how much you think, how tough you think you are. Like you have to know about the sport. There's tactics involved. Uh, there's equipment, there's uh, training, there's nutrition. And like there's a level headedness in a race that you have to, have to to apply the correct decisions on the limit so if you like this video you should definitely check out this video because i know you're gonna love it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel